In this video, we're gonna show you multiple different ways to add insulation to a one-sided ICF series. Hey guys, it's Cody with Up to Code here, coming at you with a ton of ICF content, like usual. All right, so today we're talking about the one-sided ICF series. Now, we're gonna specifically focus on the Nadura one series because that's what we know and we've used before, but a lot of other ICF manufacturers have a one-sided form system, so, and they have the similar co components, so you should be able to use this just for future reference and basically figure out different combinations to add insulation value. Okay, <clears throat> now I guess before we get into it, we have video on the advantages of a system like this, so check that video out. We also have a ton of other videos you wanna check the playlists and basically forming tips on just uh, things to keep in mind when you're forming a one-sided system, uh, different types of window box, all sorts of different videos that are available. And also don't forget to check the comment section down below. We, we're getting a little more organized these days. We have links, links to tools and gear that we use and wear every single day. Our Patreon channel where we have exclusive uh, video footage, courses that are available and some up to code gear that's for sale soon. So anyway, I just gotta fill you guys in on how the system works a little bit, even though we have other content on it is so here's a little poured section. We showed one, one window buck that's kind of option that's available. But how the system works is this is called a multi-link tie. This adds two and five eighths to, the, to your wall. And you need this little multi-link tie to, to attach the form ply. So this is a six and five eighths concrete core. And that's because we're gonna add in this four inch web. So this web, um, you gotta read upside down folks, you can do it, four inch web, but it gives us a six and five eighths concrete wall because if you look from the top, this snaps into the formwork here. So that's how that works. So this will give you the background information on how and why we can add insulation to the series, okay? So the first thing you can do is Instead of buying a four inch web, you can buy a six inch web. So now, so we have a six inch web inserted to our multi-link. Now, we basically have an eight and three quarter inch wall thickness. Now, if you want to go, if you want to maintain the six and five eighths concrete core, and you want to add insulation value, then you just grab a two inch insert stuff that down. Now you have, like this assembly would have been just like an R12 wall assembly. Now this one here is an R20. So you have an R20 and you still have six and five eighths, six and three quarters worth of concrete there, okay? So what's nice about that, you can easily add the insulation. It doesn't really take much labor. And the fact that your snap ties, which I've mentioned lots in other videos, these snap ties are every eight inches. And you, you can't overlook the beauty of the system. You can attach drywall, exterior siding, anything to these ties. They're every eight inches. It's very easy to do. So that's why this system is genius because you add insulation, but you don't need to like strap it out and add all these different elements and labor to the, to the system. <clears throat> so now the next step is you just keep increasing your web size. So we have an eight inch web. We're adding two and five eighths for the multi-link tie. So now we have a 10 and three quarter inch wall. Now what we can do is we can add a four inch insert. So now we've added a four inch insert we have the exposed concrete on the interior. Now we have an R28 
wall assembly. Now the R value is plus or minus. I'm not getting exact technical scientific data on you. It's just a roundabout number. And we maintain that six and six and a half, six and five eighths type wall concrete. Depends if you count the outside of the fin or the inside. So we're not gonna beat that to death. Then you just keep, you can keep doing this process. So we have now a 10 inch web. So here's a 10 inch web. We have a 12 and three quarter inch wall. Now, depending on your situation, you might be, you might need an eight inch or eight and five eighths concrete core. And then you could just slip in the four inch insert. So let's say you had a high backfill, you needed a thicker wall on one section of your building. You can, you'd still, this would still give you an R28 with an eight and five eighths plus or minus concrete wall. So you could have more strength here, more thermal mass, which we'll get into. And we have videos on thermal mass as well, which never gets factored into our value. So thermal mass, the weight of the concrete adds capacity and storage for energy, whereas our value is different. It just resists the, the temperature change from one side of the wall to the other. So we have videos more specifically on that. So you can just check the link and the card right there. Click on that, you can watch that video. So you, for this wall, you can add a six inch foam, which would give you an R36 with the six and five eighths concrete or maintain what we just talked about. So then there's a few more options. Things are getting crazy. Things are getting crazy. Another thing you could do is buy an unassembled block from the XR35 series. So this would be about an R17 and a half. You got your plywood here. And then I got some eight inch ties, which would give me a 10 and five eighths overall wall. Let's try to do this. Okay, so depending on what options you like and which ones you wanna go with, you could just do this R17 panel, or again, you have this set up and then you can add the additional panels. You can add a two inch panel, a four inch, and you just change the web size accordingly. So you can alter your concrete core, your amount of insulation. Now, where you would use a system like this is multiple different ways. I would love to see this in a passive house where let's say this is our wall assembly, our concrete cores on the interior. We have a ton of insulation over here. This wall is running east to west. This would be the north side. And then your passive house, you wanna utilize your south facing windows that are over here. The south sun comes in the winter time and just heats up this storage capacity, the thermal mass in this wall. I think that'd be a beauty application for that. Another one would be uh, an elevator shaft. So you can use, you can have the interior concrete. Actually, let's just go over here. You can have the interior concrete for your elevator shaft. You can have insulated on the other side for sound rating for your commercial building. And remember, don't forget that we have these ties that you can attach, drywall to, siding, plywood, anything. And then again, depending on your application, you can just add insulation value, which would add sound and an R factor. So that there's a ton of different options you can use, but this system is beauty for an elevator shaft or another one would be if you have a commercial bay, you're, you're constructing a building, this needs to be exterior fire rated wall. And then later someone else can build other bays up to this. Then your insulation on this side would be the interior side of your commercial building. And again, you can add whatever R factor you want to get to maintain whatever efficiency level you want. And you still have those easy points of attachment. So you don't have to strap anything. You don't need to vapor barrier anything. You simply just run any electrical that you need and drywall it, plywood it, and you're done. So anyway, 
that pretty much covers this topic for now. A lot of different combinations you guys can use. Almost anything under the sun, if you want to get fancy, build a super high-end greenhouse, you can do it with this system. Uh, we made a video about the advantages of this system, and so that's worth watching, so check that video out as well. And until next time, we're gonna sign off. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you around.